Carolina on the ride. What's going on, Panther Nation? Bill Mack here with another edition of the Panther Proud. Glad you folks could join me for another week. As you can see, this video, of course, we are in a bye week. Uh, no game this week for our beloved Panthers. Uh, this has been, for me, I think one of the longest. I've, I've never remembered the Panthers having a bye week this late in the season. Um, going into week, I say... It's week 13, but, you know, they would, they would normally count bye weeks towards it. But, really, it's week 13. A lot's going on. Uh, I'll give you a little rundown here. The Panthers, of course, at this point in the season, they're 4-8. They have lost, like, quite a few games in a row this, this year uh, up to this point. There's been a lot of ups and highs and things we have to look forward to. Yeah, there's some things that we really need to correct or get better or improve on uh, for the last, you know, four games of the season. Um, the Panthers, of course, right now are 4-8. and eight. Uh, They are last in the NFC. Um, they are 2-4 and four at home, 2-4 and four on the road. So we split, you know, their home and road records. We've, we've got a lot to look forward to. It's a new team, a new coach, a new system, new everything. And... Panther Nation, we have to be, you know, it's okay to critique, but I've read so many different groups and Panther uh, Facebook groups where people seem to be impatient, not realizing just how young of a team we have. We've, we drafted seven defensive players. Four of them are, have been our starters this season. You know, they're having to learn. I, I think we've been well, especially our defense, really, oddly enough, is coming together and gelling together more um, this, you know, at this point in the season than our offense, you know. And Rule is more of an offensive coach, I think. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown of, of my thoughts of the high spots and low spots and things like that. Well, it shouldn't be a very long video for you. But like I said, I was trying to debate whether to do a video, but I, I, I try to get one out each week. Um, bright spots, of course, on our defense. Um, Jeremy Chin has been great. He had two uh, two fumble returns for touchdowns this past week against the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, for the year so far, he's got 87 tackles, one tackle for loss, five passes defense, an interception, a forced fumble, two fumble recoveries, and two fumbles returned for touchdowns. The guy, to me, should be defensive rookie of the year. I saw NFL Network did a piece on that earlier. I think he should be. The guy's playing lights out. I'm glad we drafted him. They knew what they were drafting when they drafted this guy out of a smaller college. You know, picking him in the second round was a great pick for us. He's been playing well. Also playing well, uh, second-year man, defensive end, Brian Burns. Brian Burns, Spider-Man. 46 tackles, six sacks, eight and a half tackles for loss, three pass defenses, and three force fumbles. Man's a beast, and he's only going to get better. I mean, uh, one guy jumped from year one where Rivera basically used him more on special teams than real playing, but Rule's throwing him out there in his second year, and, and the guy is, is awesome. He's a beast. He's, and he can only get better. Even Luke even complimented him. So we know he's doing well. Shaq Thompson, of course, being the leader to me. I Like I said, I don't have the stats right out, but just right off you know, top of my head. Shaq Thompson's been playing well as far as being a leader someone on that um, defense, you know, <clears throat> when Luke unexpectedly retired at the end of this past season, um, Shaq has been one to stand in there and be the general, trying to be the captain of that defense. So I applaud Shaq Thompson for that. Another rookie defensive tackle, Derek Brown, has played well. 27 tackles, six tackles for loss, two passes defense. Not a lot of sacks, uh, and I'll, I'll get to that. Uh, and, of course, uh, Dante Jackson, he's been hurt. He's re He had turf toe earlier in the season. He's tried to play through it, re-aggravated it. Um, up to this point, he has, he's had 18 tackles, six pass defenses, and three interceptions. So that leads the team in that. So that really says a lot with three, and he's been out for a few games. Um, when our defense, like I said, they, they are going to continue to play in well. Um, there are, you know, 
it, they could get better rushing. I'm still not a big fan uh, of the defensive play calling at times. I'm not a big zone guy, but they play it a lot. The teams exposed them early in the season. They've ju adjusted well to that. So for my defense or defense, I have only nothing but a positive outlook and optimistic about them continuing to get team chemistry to grow together. They're a young team, and they'll continue to get better with some of the veterans in there. Now we go to our offense. Uh, we've got three star receivers. I'm not going, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. We, we've got three weapons uh, on here, and to me, it's the most loaded I think our weapons have been, and since the old days, you know, when you had Ricky Perot and Musa Muhammad, Steve Smith, you had great guys playing. Um, course of course, we'll start off with Robbie Anderson, free agent p signing from the Jets. Great pickup. Bet one of the best pickups I think we've had. He's got 75 catches. He's 82. He's 88 yards away from getting a thousand, and he's only like 30 over 30 before he gets it to beat his career best. Uh, a couple touchdowns. Of course, DJ Moore from last year doing well again. Looks like he's got 924 yards. Uh, he also could eclipse a thousand yards for back-to-back -back season. Like I said, there's only been uh, three other players to do that: Musa, Steve, and Greg Olson to do that. Can be done. Um, also, too, and, and he doesn't have the biggest stats, but what he's done on the field and more of a gadget player has been the emergence of Curtis Samuel with his speed this year. Um, Curtis has got 54 catches, uh, 517 yards, three touchdowns, and as a running back, 27 attempts on 117 yards and two touchdowns. So five total touchdowns for him, but he's made plays all over the field. He has been Mr. Clutch. Um I did see that he was at last week's, um, I don't know what it is this week, but last week's his catch rating was at 91%. So that means when you need Mr. Clutch, Mr. Third Down, Samuels is your guy to do it. Now, whether they're going to be able to pay all three of those guys in a few years, we'll see. But I, I think these guys are awesome uh, weapons for Teddy to have, you know. And speaking of Teddy, uh you know, him taking over this year, coming back, uh, playing five games last year as starter for uh, New Orleans when Breeze was out. He's 257 of 366, putting him at 70% of his passes, which has been great, which is what you could ask for. Um, that's all we've been trying to get someone complete. A lot of check downs, a lot of, a lot of play calling is the reason for that. Uh, he, he's had two, uh, 2,800, 19 yards, 14 TDs, 8 intercepts, and 19 sacks. Uh, you know, quite a bit of sacks, and that's just attributed to the offensive line and adjusting to that. Um, Teddy has made some mistakes at questionable times, um, and I would think the problem to me, and I, I'm trying to hold off on any criticisms until uh, I get done, just giving a little praise to the team now. And uh, also, too, uh, Christian McCaffrey, a big note for this year, got injured early in the year. Hasn't played but three games this year, um, you know, and Mike Davis has come out of nowhere and been carrying the ball. Uh, Davis uh, has had 126 car uh, carries for 504 yards and three touchdowns. Davis is a bruiser. He's a great guy. He's a great player. He has done well for McCaffrey. And the whole, I would say the whole running back troop that the Panthers have been having out there spearheaded by Mike Davis. Now, McCaffrey did play three games. He's got 59 catches, 225 yards, and five touchdowns. So he's actually got more touchdowns in his three games. But they they rely on him more. That's why. So that was the good things I tried to get out. Now, here are some of the negatives uh, that I am going to talk about. Um, play calling. I have questioned numerous times this year with certain play calling, like especially with this last game uh, against Minnesota when we had a chance to win, run the clock down, you know, do what we needed to do and try to get a win where it would look great going into the bye week. There's been times where I, that not only me, but we've seen a lot of problems with play calling, whether it's the plays themselves or communication between Rule and, you know, his play and, and Teddy. And the thing is, is that, I know rules coming out of college and normally the clock may stop and give you time, but in NFL, you know, it's a constant go, go, go. And that's being a thing that they've had a lot. I can't tell you the number of times they've lost timeouts 
on account of not getting the plays in to them, you know, and then plays where you think they would, should have run the ball when they were running. I, I've even stated in my videos, a question in the play call, you know, and, and granted, like I said, it's the first year rule as a college coach, he'll take his lumps, but you're kind of hoping as the season goes on, you try to pick up and learn a little bit, especially something as such as uh, clock management and uh, play calling, you know, and, and especially with the, with the defense. I, that's been one of the main things, too, with me running that three three five. You know, when, by doing that, running the three three five, you're not getting a lot of pressure to your quarterbacks. You notice I didn't say whoever had a lot of sacks or somebody having a lot of interceptions or pressures because there just wasn't there. I mean, there's times we had a few games we played well, got a few sacks, gotten them well, but for the most part, we haven't gotten a lot of pressure like we should have gotten. Uh, also, too, one I've been preaching through and, and talking about each week has been third down conversions by our offense. We are, you know, I know that we're, we're averaging like the second lowest, I think I said it was in, you know, three and outs. But we've got to get these third down conversions done, you know, and I know we're doing well with averaging, I think, fifth best in drive time, averaging drives. But, you know, we've got to we've got to give our um, keep our offense out there. We've got to do better, especially in the in, in the uh, we've gotten better in the uh, red zone. That was a problem. We were having red zone touchdown conversions, but we did. We have gotten better with it where I think we were like 11 of 11 or 10 of 10. In doing that, so we're doing that well. Um, also, too, as like I said, as being um, as been the time engine and everything's new. You know, it's 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 new. Teddy, like I said, Teddy has been at the subject of a, a few questionable um, calculations on his part. Um, he had he had gotten hurt. I I read that he got hurt. They re-injured that injury at the near the end of the game this past week. But I will say Teddy has been heroic. Teddy is on it, you know, is on it up, man. Teddy is, you know, a great guy, and, and they, they respect him. What he's been through with blowing out his leg uh, in Minnesota, you know, in Minnesota, and given the chance he's gotten now, but he's still got to hold accountable for the play calling and things that he's done as well that's been on his part because uh, he is the quarterback. You know, he's going to be the leader of that offense and guide them and, and get them in. But he has shown some dynamic plays, especially with his feet this year. You know, Teddy, uh, Teddy's been 36. He carried the ball 37 times, 208 yards, three rushing touchdowns. So he's been running the ball a little bit. You know, we can't expect him to be like Cam, where Cam was a different kind of runner. But Teddy's been doing well. Uh, I think, too, been another problem we have has been with our kicking game. Uh, Joy Sly has had, to me, has – Missed vital at vital times with touchdown uh, field goal attempts. Now, Joey is 27 of 31, but he's one from six from 50 yards and out. So that just means whenever he hit 50, he's only one six. We had a, a chance last week to get, he had a chance to kick a 54 yard. Ain't the question of his leg, but he's just not he's not getting them right, and we ended up losing because he missed that field goal near the end of the game, that would have basically given us the lead and possibly a win if our defense would have held up. But I've had problems with Joy last year with that, you know, and any question, was it good to release um, Graham Gano and keep Sly? We'll never know. But uh, I do know he's missed some valuable kicks for us, especially from 50 yards and out. Uh, he's, he's only missed two extra points, which isn't bad. Um, you know, so we, we got a lot to go through this, this bye week, you know, hopefully Christian McCaffrey will be back in the Denver game. So then my question is this, how should we take the bye? Now I was listening to Jake and, uh, Jordan and Jake, uh, the Panthers podcast earlier. And they were talking about this. How should you come out of the draft? How should you come out of the bye week? Should you sitting right there now with that loss against Minnesota? It kind of puts us at sixth or seventh in the draft to get a good draft pick or as whereas before maybe a win would have got us a nine or a ten in that. So do you want to go out there and say, okay, we, we know that with the mindset, okay, we know that ride the playoffs. We don't need to rush. We don't need to try to do this. You know, we can just go in and get a good draft pick and, you know, don't rush anybody back or, or take our time or however we please. Or do you go into it like Jake had mentioned where, should we shouldn't we just go and ride the momentum into next season? 
Should we not see where our guys stand? And are you really dedicated to this? Play them like they need to play them. Play them like th these games are worth it. Even though they may not be in the playoffs, play it like it's worth it. Ride that momentum, you know, into next season. You know, give your team uh, a good high, you know, to go out on. I mean, don't just get to me. Just don't give up. Just because you may be out of playoffs, play hard. You know, McCaffrey's well, play him if he didn't like we did with earlier in the season. If he's not, then not. But if he is, let him play. You know, that's what you want to do. you got to let your team see just how well where you stand at and who really wants to win and who doesn't. But uh, anyways, it's one of those two choices. Which one are you? First uh, scenario or the second scenario? And... Last but not least, of course, um, when we come out this bye week, uh, we're host we're hosting, I think, the Denver Broncos, which had a very unreal situation this past Sunday, where all our quarterbacks were basically quarantined with COVID, and they had to get a wide receiver off the practice squad to play quarterback. So it remains to be seen how well we play against Denver this year. They're not as not as good as people maybe have thought or were hoping they would be, but it is a chance to get a win, and that's what we want to go into. It's get a W. You know, play your heart out. Don't just give up and lay over just to get a a better draft pick. Like I said, right now we're right now we're at six and seven. Who knows? Maybe get a uh, top ten. That's all really you can shoot for, and then get a good pick next year. So that's how it goes, Panther Nation. You know, it just depends on where, what you want, how you're going to play, where your team at, and how how united are your team and getting better each week is the important thing, gelling together. So um, before I close this video out, of course, all, as always, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Um, share this video with others, uh, Panther fans or football fans. If you have any comments or suggestions or anything, always feel free to drop them in the comment box. I will definitely get to them as soon as possible. So bye week this week, Panther fans. No game. So I'll be back with a preview video in a little over a week. Uh, against the, uh, like I said, playing host to the Denver Broncos. So until next time, Panther Nation, uh, this is Bill Mack with the Panther Prowl saying, keep pounding. <laughs>